I thought I'd do a quick video to update um, loads of people out there who have been had some idea of what I've been going through uh, for the last what uh, in some ways 16 17 months uh, other ways the last uh, seven months um, I was in the hospital for over six weeks uh, and I did have uh, a schwannoma, a schwannoma um, pulled out of my spine, uh, a benign tumor, tumor that was blocking most of my uh, spinal canal and was, uh, in fact, left me to the point of before I went to the hospital in early April, um, virtually unable to stand um, and walk. Um, it was uh, fairly serious surgery. Uh, I read, you know, I was uh, not doing well at the time when the surgery happened because my whole body was sort of in, in a bad place. Uh, but in talking with the doctor afterwards and some other people know about it, um, yeah, it was very serious surgery. And um, thankfully, we have a very good set of surgeons in uh, Vancouver General Hospital in the uh, spinal unit. Uh, I never spent that long in a hospital, never spent that long, a lot of it, most of it, I was functionally bedridden. In the last couple of weeks, I was being able to... Uh, walk and I cheer myself on when I got to a kilometer or a kilometer a bit of walking per day um, but when I left the hospital in, in uh, early to mid-May my body was incredibly gaunt uh, basically I had functionally lost most of my muscle mass I'd already been you know in a bad place before I went to the hospital so the six weeks in the hospital didn't help I'm 55 now and recovering from this because it's nerve-based is taking time. And the, uh, the spinal stuff wasn't the only thing. I'd already previously had uh, VBD, which I can never pronounce the name of it. Um, it was bad in January. It was not so bad in February and March, but I didn't know that because I thought it was the VBD. It was the spinal tumor. It got bad again when I got out of the hospital really impacting my vision and my hearing. I'd hoped I'd be recovering a lot faster, but I had no idea uh, how long the nerve damage related to my eyes and my ear were going to take. I still am functionally deaf in my right ear. I can see well enough now that I can read off my phone, I can work off a computer screen, so I am back at work, though I'm only working part-time. I'm working 16 hours a week at the moment. I started on the 19th of July. Work has been amazing at being supportive of me coming back to work. The one thing that is getting me is just how long this recovery process is. It has been now more than three months. It's about almost three and a half months since the surgery. And I still hesitate to go walking without a cane. I can more or less walk a straight line um, but I need a cane just in case I hold it most of the time in my hand I don't use it but if I'm feeling a bit more tired or I'm going uphill I really do need the cane to keep my balance my balance is still not there but on the other hand uh, just over three months ago after the surgery I couldn't stand unaided I couldn't walk one step unaided I was in, in the hospital, the main thing that I used was a walker, and that's what I needed, but I could not, without the walker, really do anything. Um, so, yes, I guess it, it, I have done incredibly well. Apparently, according to the whole medical system, uh, it just seems like it's very slow to me. And I'm kind of in terms of the fact that I've had to relearn how to walk, relearn how to get up when I'm down or how to bend my body down. Um, basically everything uh, from my sh below my shoulders, my nerves were massively uh, impacted by the tumor. And when they took it out, everything's having to go back and um, try and figure it out. So I'm developing new connections. My vision, the VBD is still affecting, as I said, my vision and my, uh, my hearing. Uh, I still should not be driving a vehicle. That's probably a bad idea. Uh, yeah, it's definitely a bad idea at this point. Uh, 
bright lights are hard for me to deal with. So for the first time in my life, I'm using sunglasses. I have never ever used sunglasses because uh, it changes the color of the world or what I thought was the real world around me. But my eyes right now, everything's washed out and a little bit gray. Everything It's like, like a film that's overexposed. Everything is like that all the time. And if I go into bright light without the sunglasses, I get eye strain and a headache. And I would prefer not to do that. And as I said, I'm 55 and this has happened to me. And uh, while I was in the hospital, I realized, holy crap, Bernard, you need to do, you need to take control more, more control over your own life. You need to con control what's going to happen to you. Uh, so I've become very, I'm taking it seriously, my fitness. I'm taking it seriously what I'm eating. Um, in the past, I would have gotten junk food or eaten out in a bit. I would have like had, you know, some sort of fast food meal once a week sort of thing and chips twice a week or whatever. I've cut all that out. I make most of my own food. And by make, I mean like, you know, I'm, you know, I was always been doing things, making from the basics, but I don't buy bread from the store anymore. I, everything I can make that I can make well. I do. I don't drink soft drinks. I make my own ginger beer. It's uh, much lower in calories um, and frankly tastes better. And when it comes to the physical fitness part, I am walking 10 to 11 kilometers a day, every day. Uh, I'm getting faster at my walking, which, which in itself is good. Uh, it's not where I want to be yet. Um, I want to be at a point where um, I could be hiking up Mount Doug uh, without a problem. I want to be at a point of where my fitness is better than it has been since my late twenties. And in the hospital, I'd realized that from my, you know, mid teens, say until my late twenties, I was actually relatively fit and relatively, I mean, I was, I had a gut and I always felt I was fat, but I was relatively fit. And the reason was because I did all these things in my life that um, weren't, quote, going for exercise, but were exercising. Uh, so like in high school, I would um, ski three or four times a week uh, during the winter and I'd do judo twice a week um, and I would cycle to places. It'd be like, okay, I'm in Tuas and I feel like going in like I'd go and visit my sister in Burnaby and cycle to her place. So I did a lot of that. I hiked a whole bunch of different things and that. And it's like the West Coast Trail when I was at university. Yeah, no problem. I mean, yeah, okay. I hurt myself. Uh, I hurt myself because I let something hit my leg and um, it caused a problem. Um, but it wasn't due to the lack of fitness. But somewhere... Somewhere after I moved to Lillooet, after I got a sedentary office job, after life just sort of got a hold of me, I got unfit. And I had bursts of trying to become fit and then not doing anything enough about it. And I thought, yeah, okay, I'm, you know, 35. I'm doing okay for 35. I'm 40 or 45 or I'm 50. Like physically, yeah, I'm okay enough. I mean, I'm better than better than average. Yeah, I'm overweight and that sort of thing. But my, you know, my blood pressure, it's on the borderline, but it's not too bad. And, and you know, I can generally do what I want to do, but I'm realizing now I was fooling myself. I was, I mean, being average at age 55 is not a good thing. And I look around at a lot of the people at age 55, people that are my age and how many of them have let their bodies get away from them and have let themselves. I know one guy who's my age who's functionally housebound now because of, of, of his health. So I have to do something now. I had to rebuild my whole muscle system anyway because of the hospital and because I need to learn walking again. But I have to. I have to take it seriously now to be fit. And being fit means that I do two hours of active things per day. Um, and that sort of is a minimum, not an average. So if I do more, great, but 
I need to be active and I need to be active all the time. I need to become someone who, sure, let's walk around Elk Lake, that's not a problem. Sure, let's go on a hike to this place, that's not a problem. Let's ride our bicycles to the Gulf Island. Like, I want to be a person that can say those things and do those things. I'd like to ideally go skiing again. I'm probably not quite fit enough. Well, I'm certainly balance wise, I shouldn't go skiing. And my vision is bad for skiing at the moment, but I'd like to be fit enough that I can go skiing, that I can go sailing and things like that. I am 55. I'd like to have another 20 to 25 years of being able to be physically active and not worry about not being fit enough to do it. I know that there is various illnesses that could hit me. The, uh, the tumor in my spine, that can happen again. It could be a reoccurring thing for me. But it'll probably be better if I'm fitter. And I'll learn how to deal with it. But I'm not going to be the cause for me to be a decrepit 75-year-old. If I'm going to be a decrepit 75 or 80-year-old, it's going to be because uh, illness has taken me, not because I've neglected me. And that's really what the last six, seven months have shown me is I need to look after myself first and foremost physically. Mentally is a whole other story. We won't go into that. But anyway, uh, it's a bit of an update where I'm where I'm at for a lot of you who've um, been interested in or have been concerned about what's been going on in me. Anyway, thank you for watching. Bye.